So what an unbelievable pleasure it is. And this is one that we never thought that we would get. Never. Uh, I don't know. We don't want to embarrass you, Matt. But Matt Sundin on the Steve Nagel podcast. Thank you so much for making time for us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. What an honor. Well, it was an honor to watch you up close because this is the first time we've seen you in like 10 years uh, on local ice. And, and it's, it's amazing, Matt. It's like you could still play uh, center for us. And we have a third line opening this year. Are you any, any interest in coming back? or? <laughs> A little bit too old. You know, 10 years ago, I would have thought about it. Not anymore. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> no, even after all this time, you can still, like, tell who a player is out on the ice, like, just by their equipment. And ev <laughs> everything's the same for you. Is your stick shorter than most players' sticks? Still? Uh, I don't think so. No? No, I, I think sticks are obviously very individual. Uh, some guys, Tim and Solana, play with a very short stick. And there's some guys that play with longer, so... I think it's very individual how long your sticks, sticks are. Um, when, you, when you do get on the ice, it was kind of fun. It was, it's, it's fun to watch because, you know, you're passing around it because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's pros and Joes, right? It's, it's the guys that, you know, grew up watching you. And yeah. then, it's, then it's you and Steve Thomas and, yeah. uh, you know, there's so many – Todd Warren or so many great players out there. Um, and, and it's funny. When you guys decide to – there's, they're not playing anymore. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's like it, it, there was a couple times out there where you're like, yeah, I could pass this, but I'm going to take this for myself yeah. <laughs> and, and just see where my hands are still. Do, when you put on skates now, uh, does it feel like you're still the same guy you were 10 years ago, or do you feel like, oh, maybe I could sharpen this up a little bit? <laughs> no, I mean, you play like this, it's fun. And always, it, as soon as there's a game, it gets competitive, you yeah. know, and there's some other ex-pros on the other side. They don't want to lose, so... <laughs> So once, once it, at the, always at the end of games like this, the pace goes up a little bit because no one wants to lose. <laughs> but uh, no, obviously you feel that you're not moving. I think your brain is thinking you're going to you know, change speed and stuff that you did when you were in your prime. It doesn't really happen. The body doesn't follow us. But it, it's a great game. And hockey is a great sport because you, you can play together, even though we're different levels here, obviously, in the... In this camp, everybody's having a great time. And when you're out playing hockey, you know, it doesn't matter if you played one day your first time or you played your whole life. So it's a great sport that way. Do you try and keep up with your conditioning? Like, do you keep I, I do. I don't skate a whole lot anymore. No. But I, I do train every, you know, three, four times a week at least to stay in shape. But also the wear and tear for playing the National Hockey League. I have hips and, you know, shoulders and knees and all that has been taking a beating for many years. So I need to be moving all the time. And when I train and work out uh, and take care of myself, uh, I don't have any symptoms from my career. But as soon as I don't, you know, you start to get inflammations in your hips and knees and stuff. Those cranky wow. joints. Ah, uh, the right. 90s. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you ever, do you ever, like, look at some of your old games or, or even look at today's game and go, man, they have it so easy with all the new rules and everything? Oh, no, not really. I, I mean, and, and it, it's the classics. It's impossible to compare different eras, you know. Yeah. But uh, there's no doubt that the way the game is being played today, it, it, you see there's more... Swedes, for example, and Europeans, it's a more fitting game because, you know, even the Stanley Cup finals that we watch now, there's long periods of the game where there's r really no body contact. In front of the net before you went in the front of the net, you have Dave Manson there or <laughs> Scott Stevens, and there was really no rules in front of the net. It, it was a full-on war. So the game has changed, but I think it's all for the good. The pace has gone up because of that. You have skilled guys in all four lines. We didn't have that uh, in the late 90s. So, um, but, but you, if you look at the skill guys that played when I, in my era, I look at a guy like Brian Berard, he would get, when he came into the league, he was a, and he was a, a run and gun kind of defenseman. He would be perfect playing in today's the game. He would get 80 points. He'd be like an Eric Carlson playing in the league today. Um, when, you, uh, when you watch the games today, like, I mean, do you catch many Leaf games? I, I don't, because I'm mostly in Europe. I don't catch them live, but mm -hmm. I see obviously a lot of highlights and I, I follow the playoffs. What, have you, uh, what, do you, what do you see from a guy like, and this is an obvious question, but when you see this is the, young, this is the new young team, this is you know, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, William Nylander, yeah. Morgan Riley on the back end, what are you seeing that, that are, is encouraging? No, but I mean, as, as a Leaf fan, I think there's so much promise for the future here. And like you're talking about these players, they're barely 20 years old. Great hope for the Leaf fans. They showed this regular season what they can do, and it's just... Just, we just need to be patient with them. Let them grow into their roles as Maple Leaf. Let them grow as players. And the, the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to have a lot of success for a long time. But I think patience is going to be key for Leaf fans and for media and management. Just let the, the, this group keep gelling and, and grow together. 
Do you consider yourself a Leaf fan to this day? Are you of a fan course. of the team? Of course. I yeah. think we all, had, anyone who's been in Toronto, been associated with the Maple Leaf, whether as a player or as a fan on the street, we all want for the Leaf fans in the city of Toronto to, to win a championship and a Stanley Cup. So uh, we're all hoping to, th- this group's going to get it together for sure. Do you have any non-Matt Sundin Leaf memorabilia? <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you have a lot of your own Borea stuff. Borea saw me. I got some stuff of Borea, of did course. Get one his, of my so did he send you some free underwear when no, he came out with the underwear line? Yeah, I, he, has, he has, actually. <laughs> I got some Was of it that a picture stuff. of him in it, too? Uh, no, no Because <laughs> he models his own yeah. underwear. <laughs> but I do, I do get some underwear from him, for sure. And it's still, hey, he's, he's almost 70 years old, and he's ripped. Unbelievable. He's great Unbelievable. Jack. Well, I was, so we were watching the game, and I guess Borea brought a lot of his friends over, and they made a bunch of Borea Salming videos. And when they showed him on the Jumbotron, when they, and then they'd show replays of him, uh, you know, when the, when the Leafs scored, and the excitement in yeah. him, he still seems like a kid. Yeah. That's why he looks, he looks so great, and he's young. He's a big part of life, and staying young, I think, is, is to... Act like a kid once in a while. We all, we all need it. <laughs> need a little more Boria. Exactly. Uh, how you been, man? Like, <laughs> we've missed you. Yeah, we yeah, have. Shitty. We've missed you, man. Well, that's good. Everything's been good. I, since I left and, and retired, three kids, you know, one, our daughter is turning six here in August. We have a little boy. He's three. We have another boy. He's 16 months. Busy the last six years or five, six years. So, But I, I, I'm hoping really to be able to come back to Toronto a lot more than I have uh, the last five, six years. Uh, every time I land in Toronto, I consider it my home. I told my wife, we, were, we, we walked around the city, we walked by the old Maple Leaf Gardens. It really brings back great memories that I've had in the city. When you, you know, looking at life as a dad now, okay, and then you're, and you come into this league and obviously uh, first European to go first overall, um, you come to Canada, then you come to Toronto especially, you know, after Quebec City. Um, what would you tell your younger self to, to, to do differently maybe if, if you could? Well, I don't think there would have been so much. I, 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 wouldn't, I don't think I would have done a whole lot any other way. I think when I grew, if anything, when I came in as a young player, I was a huge talent. I learned about the work ethic and, and the extra stuff that guys are doing now earlier with the, with the training off the ice and all that. I could have done even more of that at an early stage, but I picked up around 26, 27. I, I kind of learned that this is very important to be a player at the elite level in this league for a long time. You got to take care of yourself off the ice and, and work out and all the stuff that, that uh, all these guys do right away today when they're 19. What's harder, being a parent or being in the NHL? B- being a parent, for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Play in the National Hockey League. I mean, when we play in the National Hockey League, it's, it's the same feeling as, that's a great thing about the ho- great game of hockey. Whether you pay pickup or a pro camp like we are here today, or in the Stanley Cup Finals, in the, it's, you have to play the game. You know what I mean? It is a game. So parenting is way harder than, than playing hockey. <laughs> you know, some fourth-line <laughs> player more, yeah. might, might say that the NHL is harder, but, I mean, it's easy for you. You scored over 500 goals, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think we all of us, the, I, I, and we talked about it in the dressing room today, and Brian Berard and we talked about it. You know, it's, it's weird. It's the same feeling. It, it's not easier to play in the pro camp game either physically. It's just... It's just that the game is kind of the same. It doesn't matter what level you play at. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm just in awe of being around <laughs> Matt and Dean, man. No, um, d- have you noticed, because I've noticed over the last little while, that the Leafs are slowly but surely, as an organization, becoming Team Sweden? Like, <laughs> all the way through the minor leagues. It's like, always what? been, no? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah no. I guess it was. <laughs> no, but uh, do you know much about, like... Per Lindholm, for example, he's coming over? Watched him play, yes. Yeah. I watched him play this year in the Swedish League. I don't know a whole, whole lot about the other young guys that are in the Maple Leaf system. Nylander, obviously, I, I followed him since he was a kid, watched him play, great talent. So, and, I, and I know that Babcock in Detroit, he had a lot of Swedes on his teams when they won the Stanley Cup. So I think it, teams, I mean, Swedes and Canadians are very similar in, in the way we are as as human beings, I think, as teammates and all that, so I, I, think it's a, I think it's a great fit. And Nylander's kind of this like, perfect hybrid because he was born in Calgary. Yeah. I think Don Cherry <laughs> exactly. remind people of that. But. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, he's Canadian. Yeah, of yeah well, that's right. <laughs> what am I saying? What well, he is yeah. playing for Team Sweden, so, yeah, you know. Right. They, they uh, let him slide. He's good enough. Um, what, is it, what is it now? If you look back on your career and, and, and you think about you know, all the amazing memories 
that you had. You played with yeah. some incredible players. I mean, we saw some today. You mentioned Brian Burrard a couple times, Todd Warner, Wendell Clark, uh, Ty Nomi's kicking around, Cujo's here. Um, are, are, there, are there moments that stick out that, that make you feel like, okay, this is when I felt, and this is going to sound super cheesy, but forgive me, I'm a Leaf fan, uh, where I'm like, where you really felt like this is my, one of my favorite Leaf moments, where I felt most like Toronto Maple Leaf, like it was a, uh, a family, like it was a brotherhood, a community. Yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, we had two runs to the conference finals. Both those runs are obviously very special, I think, in the city. We all know how the city comes alive in the playoffs. Um, especially, I think, early or the first year we moved into the Air Canada Center, we went, went to, we lost to Buffalo in the conference finals, but that was a, we had a special team there. We were a young, and a team really that was built a lot like modern day hockey teams. We were deep, we had Steve Sullivan type of guys on our third line. We really had scoring right through the whole lineup, and those were really, an, a, I look back at that era, it was really a special time to be part of the Maple Leafs, and we had a really tight dressing room. And Buffalo cheated anyway. I wouldn't even feel bad about Hasek. <laughs> Hasek was cheating in that. Yeah, really? Throwing <laughs> a stick. In him. I don't know what he's doing. Pretty much. Um, uh, yeah. I, I got to ask you this because, I mean, there's a, there's a few fan questions here. We had a, you know, an Ask Matt's yep. thing. So I've got three questions from our Reddit page. Yep. First one is, uh, what was the best way for you and your teammates to bond during long road trips? And do you have any stories that you can share about those bonding? Yeah. I, I think any team, uh, and as a captain too, you want to get the team together away from the ring. So... Go for dinners and, and, you know, have a few beers uh, and get to know the guys. And we always said, and, and my really feeling from being a captain for a long time, 23 guys on the team, all 20, 23 guys and eight, nine different nationalities sometimes. It's impossible to be best friends, but you need that respect in the dressing room. And I think once you hang off the ice away from the rink, that's a good place to build that. So we try to do different, like, social stuff together away from, from the rink. Um. You know, you bring up the captaincy. Leafs have noticeably had one vacant for two and a half seasons now. The obvious question everybody's asking is, is this Austin Matthews year to be yeah. captain? Um, is, you know, is 21-22 too early? Uh, and, and, and more importantly, forget whether it's too early or not. What does it take? Yeah. What does it really take in <laughs> Toronto? I, you know what? I, I think in that dressing room, and, you know, we don't see in the dressing room what's going on and what the personality is, but I... I it's one of those things that's going to, you know, everybody's going to see who are the leaders in the dressing room. I think the letter that you wear on the sweater is not really the main thing. It's usually one or two. It might be more guys that are a group of leaders that will set the culture in the dressing room, set the work ethic. This is how we treat people with, when we're, we're Maple Leafs and we're proud to wear the, the jersey. So um, I, I think the Leafs are doing the right thing. And, there's, and the guys are so young. We, we, we can't forget you know, the pressure to be Maple Leaf, but, but you look at um, Austin Matthews and Nylander and Mara, these are young, they're kids, and, and let them grow and, and grow into the roles as Maple Leafs, and it's going to pan out by itself, naturally, who are the captains or leaders going to be. Personally, did you feel more pressure having the C on your jersey? No, you know what, I, I, and I didn't get a C on my letter until I was 26 or 27 or something like that. I enjoyed it. I always did, I, but I, had, I, was, I, was, I was a captain as a kid playing in Bantam and all, all the way up. And for me, I enjoy a little more responsibility. It actually made me a better player on the ice personally as well. So. But it, it, it's very personal. Not every player wants that either. Uh, the first game of the, uh, I think it was the 07 08 season, Leafs lost, unfortunately. And the front page of the Toronto Sun said, Leafs better luck next year. And it made me so mad that I started yelling and screaming into a webcam and I started a YouTube channel and I've made over a thousand videos now. Oh. Do you remember? <laughs> I yell and scream a lot. Is there anything you remember from where you were a player that just got you fired up or mad or just stuck with you at all? Or did you try to block you it? Get, no, but you get, you get, obviously, every time you lose, or you, know, you get mad and upset. That's just sports. The problem is you got to play the next day and, and that's how season rolls on, you know. So we're... Uh, most important thing as, a, as an elite player in the National Hockey League, you have to stay level-headed. Whether you lose today, you got a new game tomorrow or the other day, you got to, whether win or lose, you got to keep racing your bar and be the best you can be. So you can't really waste too much energy on thinking about what happened or what's going to happen. You just got to be in the moment and try to be the best you can be every day. A um, couple more listener questions and then we'll let you go because I know that uh, you've waited around enough, long enough even for us setting it up. Um, 
if you could play between uh, t- any oh. two wingers. Hello. Is that it? <laughs> we lost the lights. The lights are back. Um, if you could play between any two wingers today, who would it be? Wow. Who would be my wingers today? They're, play, they're currently playing in the league, you mean? Yeah. And we're sending this uh, clip to the Toronto Sun, so be very careful oh, with your okay, name. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> well, how about Ovechkin, newly uh, yeah, right Stanley right. Cup champion? There's one. Who else? Who would be on the other side here? I'm trying to think of some young Swedes that are breaking into the league here. Uh, Elias Pettersson. How about him? Uh, coming have you into seen the him league? play? I saw him the whole winter. Fantastic talent. So Vancouver is going to have a really good Swede replacing the Sedin twins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that other Swede that used to play for them. Exactly. And we'll mention that guy's exactly. name. Exactly. <laughs> uh, who had the weirdest pregame meal and, and uh, what was it? I think Nick Antropov and Alex Ponikarovsky when I played, they ate two big plates of, you know, they just put everything that was on the buffet there, the lunch buffet for the game uh, lunch, and it was, it was so much food on it, I just got sick and would of it looking be, at it. Would it be everything. good food? Or yeah, would it yeah, be like... It was good, good food, but it was like 9,000 calories on one plate. <laughs> but they were big guys. But that's they, what they ate. Still, yeah. Nick Andropov is yeah, still a big a guy. Big wow, he isn't shrunk. That's, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> they wanted to be on your line, man. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Had to stay nourished. Exactly. <laughs> well, Matt, uh, it has been, uh, it's been an honor. It really has. Uh, we all grew up watching you. We all, no. you know, and not to make things awkward, but we all had your jersey. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dream come true for us to, uh, to interview you today. Thank you for making the time. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate Pleasure. Be on here. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. All right. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.